Hey everyone, it's Matthew here from Midland Pictures. Today we're going to talk about using a full screen preview monitor with Final Cut Pro 10 using the AV output feature. So before I dive into this tutorial, I just want to take a moment to thank all of you who are watching this content. I truly cannot believe how much this channel has blown up. We are closing in on 5,000 subscribers and we have jumped from 1,000 subscribers to 5,000 in like less than a month. I've recently monetized the channel if you didn't know that, so you're seeing a lot of ads when you're watching these videos, but the income that it's generating is much more than I thought, even though it's not a ton of money. And I might make a YouTube video that kind of goes into like, well, how much did I make the first month as a YouTuber? If you're interested in knowing about that, hit me up in the comments and let me know. I'm happy to talk about it and sort of the business of what I'm doing and the strategy behind it. If that's content you'd like in addition to the Final Cut Pro 10 and filmmaking content, I'm happy to chat about that. But again, all of you who are watching the content, who are subscribing, liking the video, commenting, and all the shares, I cannot believe how many views some of these videos are racking up. The nine magic tips, 48,000 views. The 10 mistakes in Final Cut Pro 10, 17 plus thousand views. It really is incredible and I have all of you to thank for that. I love teaching, I love creating content that has value, but that goes nowhere unless you all interact with the content, engage, comment, like, subscribe, share, all of that. So if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, click the bell for notifications every time we upload a video. I'm just really excited to connect with all of you, build this community, and create content that gets you further ahead in what you're trying to do. Whether it's a YouTube channel, you're editing corporate or commercial stuff in your hometown, you're starting to try to break into features, TV, you're creating your own original content on your website or YouTube channel, short films, web series, sketch comedy, whatever it is. Let me help you get better at post-production and filmmaking by showing you the systems I use and the things that I'm doing to really have a reliable, efficient, fast, and fun workflow. So again, thank you all of you for everything you're doing to change my life honestly with this YouTube channel and what it means for my career and me as a creator. I can't thank you all enough. This Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial is really quick and simple. So if we go over to Safari, we have a couple of different options for connecting a preview monitor and external display in Final Cut Pro. This is where you can view playback in full screen. So if you have a client and let's say you have a 4K television and you want them to be able to hang out on the couch and watch an edit, there's a couple of different ways to do this. The easiest way to do it is using a monitor that's capable of having an HDMI connection and connecting that to your computer. Now a lot of the Apple computers now don't have HDMI ports. The iMacs don't, the MacBook Pros don't, they all have USB-C. You're somewhat limited as far as HDMI connectivity. The other thing too is with the HDMI connection you have to use an HDMI based monitor. You can't use like an Apple Thunderbolt display or an old cinema display that you have laying around. You can't connect to a Dell monitor using the Dell DisplayPort configuration, even if it's a DisplayPort on the monitor side, but HDMI into the computer. I think this has to do with like HDCP. It's like science -y engineering stuff that maybe Cody or Gerald Undone, somebody like them, has a better understanding of. I don't quite go into the engineering side of things. It's possible that some ways to work around that HDMI limitation, like here on the support article, is using a third-party in-out interface. So third-party in-out interfaces may be stuff like uh, a Blackmagic Ultra Studio, something that bypasses the limitations of using a non-HDMI connection. So in this article, it doesn't get terribly specific about what third-party interfaces you can use. You really have to look at those manufacturers' devices to see if they're compatible with what Final Cut offers. Now, those manufacturers may not specify this is compatible with Final Cut Pro 10's AV output feature. Really what I'm getting at is how to just do it the simplest way, which is connecting via HDMI. And that's the third way on the support article that you can connect your monitor to your computer. So if you watch my video where we upgraded my edit bay to having four monitors, we put two Thunderbolt displays on Jarvis arms and then we added a 24 inch 1080 Dell monitor to be the playback or preview monitor, the full screen preview monitor. Very simple, I have a 2013 Mac Pro, the trash can, and this monitor which has HDMI connectivity, the Mac 
Mac Pro has an HDMI port on the back, so I simply mounted this on the monitor arm, connected it via HDMI to my Mac Pro, and then went into Final Cut and set up the connection. So if you're someone who wants to go about using a full screen preview monitor or playback monitor that way, this is the tutorial for you. Now some of you are editing on computers that may not have an HDMI port, maybe as an iMac or a MacBook Pro. You can use some of the Apple adapters, uh, USB-C or Thunderbolt to HDMI. Let's actually check and see what adapters they have on their website. So you can see we've got Belkin's USB-C to HDMI. Looks like your best bet is going to be the Belkin USB-C to HDMI adapter. So using something like this, for a computer that does not have an HDMI port, that should get you the connectivity that you need to do what I'm doing in my setup with my 2013 Mac Pro. So once you've established the connection between your HDMI monitor and the HDMI port on your computer, you can go into Final Cut and set up the AV output option. So in Final Cut, you wanna verify that the monitor is being recognized as an AV output option. So to do that, you're gonna go up to uh, Final Cut Pro, Preferences, and then in Playback here, you'll see an AV output listing, and you can see mine shows the HDMI Dell, the model number, and then the resolution and uh, refresh rate. So if your monitor is being identified and connected properly to computer, you'll see it here. And then to actually activate this as your AV output, you can close this menu, you'll go up to Window, and then you'll see AV output here in the menu. Simply click that and it'll activate the AV output monitor to take what's in your main screen here and put it on the monitor in full screen. That's a more traditional pro editing setup. You'll see in a lot of edit bays in professional workflows, especially in Hollywood for TV and feature films. Again, in my recent video, I upgraded my workstation to have three monitors and then a full screen preview above my main monitor. So far, that's been working out really well. I have had Kate, the director on the project that I'm working on, hanging out in the studio and she's able to view the full screen playback of the footage. Once we actually start the editing process as opposed to the prep process, as I put scenes together with music and graphics and all the different things that we're going to have in our film, she's going to be able to watch that on the full screen monitor and it'll be a lot easier than sort of looking over my shoulder in the Final Cut editing software at a smaller window that's not optimized for for viewing. Now with remote workflows really taking off in popularity, services like Frame.io or Vimeo, there's a lot of work that's being done where the editor and director or producers, they aren't in the same room together working on cuts. I still think that's going to be very prominent in a lot of narrative workflows where a director is just going to be in there in the edit bay with the editor working on the film. If you're a solo filmmaker doing a lot of commercial corporate video, this may be something more that's for yourself to use. Or if you have a friend or a collaborator over and you just want them to kind of check out your work without having to export it, upload it to Frame.io, set up them as a collaborator, etc. Maybe you just want to hang out and have somebody have a, a, an easy way to view the content while you work on it. For me personally, I think I really like this setup somewhat because it looks cool and that's it's kind of lame and I think a little shallow, but it just makes me feel, I don't know, more professional or legit, or I have joked a little bit about it being overkill with three monitors on these arms kind of wrapped around me and then a fourth monitor up above. It looks cool. It makes me feel better. It gives me uh, kind of an energy and an excitement about the work that I'm doing to sit down in the edit bay and just really tackle all the projects that I have going on. Again, I love the idea of having collaborators come over and check out the edit bay, sit down with me and work on stuff in a more legit or professional uh, setup. Now something that really bugs me about YouTube is I really try hard to search for other people's edit setups. I search for edit bay, edit suite, edit studio, editing desk. There are not a lot of videos where different editors are showing their workstation and really getting down into all of the interfaces they use. Maybe they use a stream deck, maybe they have an audio interface. I really would love more of you to get out there and show us tours of your desk. What interfaces are you using? Keyboard, mouse, what stuff for being a power user do you have? Is there a USB hub or a dock that you have at your edit bay? Is there an in-out interface that gets you stuff to a reference monitor? What tools are you using to have your edit bay set up to not only work fast and efficiently, but to have all the tools that you need to handle the things that come up when you're editing, whether it's a light color work, recording a temporary voiceover, whatever it is, I really wanna see 
tours of these edit bays and I would love to see more tours of these edit bays from some of the pro editors that are in the Hollywood system even if you're in like a windowless room in Burbank I would love to see what monitors you're using how you have everything set up in out interfaces uh, third-party apps that you use to help with the editing process I want to know it all and I really feel like there are not a lot of videos on YouTube about what professional editors documentary editors feature editors television editors are using to be able to do their work and practice their craft so let's get more content out there like that and all of you who are watching this on YouTube I want to see what your edit situation is I want to see your edit bay so put up an Instagram story and tag at Midland pictures in it so I can check out what you're using if you have something that you use that helps you be a power user whether it's a stream deck a loop deck if it's an audio interface I'm really curious about all that stuff, particularly the audio interface, because I think that's something that I need to upgrade next is to get something that has either like an iPad with digital faders, something that can manage the connections uh, between the different audio sources I have and the audio outputs I want to have, and something as simple as like being able to plug in a set of headphones. So if I'm editing at night and my kids are asleep and my wife is asleep, I'm not listening over my studio monitors and waking them up, or I'm having to listen to it so quietly quietly that I can't really do a good mix of my YouTube content. So again, connect with me on Instagram. I'm at Matthew T. O'Brien on my personal account and for my business and YouTube channel, I'm at Midland Pictures. Send me photos. You can DM me or put up an Instagram story or a photo and tag me in your post. I wanna see everybody's edit bay and their workstation and, and talk me through some of the, the, the components and the pieces that you have that allow you to do what you're doing. So I think that's gonna do it for today. A real quick and easy tutorial. Again, I'll link to that support article from Apple down in the the description. I know for those of you that are looking to connect a full screen monitor with an in out interface, there's not a lot of specifics on the Apple support article, but feel free to hit up the community in the comments and maybe we can help guide you in the right direction if you're looking at using a black magic or another third party in out interface to set up a preview monitor through something other than an HDMI connection. I'll say it again, the best thing that you can do to support the channel is to click the like button below. So if you haven't done that already, please do so. And if you're not a subscriber, I'd love it if you click the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications every time we upload a video. That's going to be a wrap on this video, everyone. Until the next one, I will see you all soon.